Hey everybody, welcome back to Das Lab. Uh, today we're going to do part one of a video that was already, part two is kind of in the box and that's about making beef jerky today. We haven't done any Das Lab uh, uh, kitchen stuff in quite a while so um, Eye of Round was on sale. We picked up a couple. I didn't really like the look at them. I normally would have got three but there's a lot of fat in here. Um, so we're going to make a big batch. We're going to put some on the dehydrator today and we're going to freeze. I think I'll get three batches worth um, on my dehydrator. I'll be able to put the, about three, fill up the trays three times. So I'm going to make one today and we will freeze two of them. So I'm basically making a triple batch, I think. We'll see what it looks like once I get these guys butchered. Um, if you think about it, what is beef jerky? It's, uh, you know, preserved meat, you know, uh, whatnot. And the goal of it is, yeah, to make a nice yummy treat, but really we're, we're about preserving meat. And I, I don't know how long people have been making beef jerky or venison jerky or whatever, but the goal is to preserve the meat. So to promote that preservation process, we're gonna be clean, okay? The, the sink's clean, the kitchen area is clean. We're gonna do everything we can clean, wash our hands lots. And then we got a good chance of this uh, freezing well and lasting well and then uh, keeping us healthy as we have our yummy snacks. So keeping that in mind. Uh, I've already pre-sharpened my knives. Um, I like this big uh, knife and uh, I got that sharp. Uh, be doing a lot of cutting on the cutting board of course and that will tend to dull it. So it wasn't in that bad a shape because I keep on it. But if you let it get uh, too bad it's not good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, cut these open, sink is clean, and then I can start processing and I'll show you exactly what we want to get out of this in preparation for our beef jerky. So uh, I'm just going to basically divide and conquer, cut in half, let that drain, and I'll show you what I do with the bags later because it is summer here and uh, we want to keep our kitchen clean and free of flies. So right off the bat, I can see that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of fat around the outside of this. But um, you guys can't see what I'm doing, can you? Yeah, and, uh, and that's fine, because uh, we're going to trim most of the fat off. You can't preserve the fat. I mean, maybe you can, but I found that if any, I ever have fat lingering on my uh, beef jerky, it gets kind of tangy and it doesn't preserve right. I'm just going to take care of these bags. What I do is I take them and I have a spare old bag of stuff that I keep in my freezer out in the garage uh, for garbage day because this can get kind of nasty. If you just put this in your garbage and they only actually pick up our garbage here every two weeks, um, you'd have lots of flies and whatnot. So. That's that, and that will freeze until garbage day, and there's no problem. I'll be right back. Okay, so what is the goal here? The goal here is to trim as much of the fat off as we can. This is why I use Eye of Round, because yes, there's a lot of fat on it, but the fat is manageable. I can get at it. Now, there's little pieces of this connective tissue and whatnot that is not a big deal, but we basically have to trim off all of that fat. Okay, because don't forget, we're not cooking this. It's not going to melt away. And you do not want that. Doesn't make for good jerky. Okay. So, I mean, probably not good for you either. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. but So, looking at it in the package, that was kind of tough to tell how much fat there was by looking at the package. And what you, what you don't want is, it's okay to have the fat on the outside, it's the marbling, right? If this had big veins of fat, it's, it's tough, it's tough to get that out of your mixture. You just go around and you, you shave, there, the knife's getting duller already. You just shave the fat off. Now that's the whole thing is, I mean, I, I do not like waste, but that's kind of why we wait for this to go on sale. Okay, so what I'm going to do, folks, as you probably know, 
well, I guess maybe I'm not so bad with this particular channel, but I don't always measure when I make recipes. Um, this time I'm gonna I'm gonna weigh everything, and we'll get a precise recipe. But I don't have one to post right now. I will after the video is made, because this will be the first time in 27 years I've been probably been making this since I lived with Jeffrey, and you know who you are, Jeffrey. Back in the old days, in the early mid 90s, is how I got introduced to beef jerky, the homemade variety, and um, and I've been making it ever since. That's actually the same dehydrator I bought at Home Hardware uh, back in Concordia a long time ago. So there we go. Just about got it shaved down. Don't let some of this connective tissue um, be confused with uh, fat, okay? And if you don't get 100% of it, it's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. We're going to put so many spices and flavors in here, it'll kind of mess. But you just don't want to chew into a big piece of fat. And I think that that looks pretty darn good. Now, you could put this on a meat slicer, which I do have over there. I'm not going to do that. What I want is try, I don't care about the shape of it, I don't care about the, the circumference or the surface area, I just want to have sort of even thicknesses. Now you can make nice strips but the more pieces you have the more you have to manipulate over on the uh, second part, the dehydrating part. So I like to just basically make big pieces. Uh, what I'm going to do is going to cut this guy right in half. Okay, so there. That's not the end of the world. That marbling, probably be nice. That'd probably be a nice roast to eat. But you see this piece here? That is going to be a piece of jerky. So when I cut that, okay, so there's going to be one piece of jerky. And it's about, I don't know what, three-eighths? No, not three-eighths. Not even a quarter inch. Um, Three-sixteenths of an inch thick. Something like that. Just try to be consistent. Okay, cut, and I'm just throwing them in a bowl. I'm gonna do all of this, and then I'm gonna weigh it, uh, divide it into three. Okay, so, and then uh, I'll, I'll figure out how I'm gonna make my recipe after that. They say try to cut across the grain. Okay, so you wouldn't wanna cut it this way with the grain. If you can see, there's kind of a, hopefully you can see the meat has a bit of a grain to it. And you want to cut across the grain, it just makes it a little chewier, uh, easier to eat. And again, if they're big, that's fine. That's fine. It's just, it just makes it easier to manipulate on the old dehydrator. And you cut. Try not to cut your fingers. Now, again, folks, people have said, oh, if it's frozen a bit, it makes it easier to cut. Well, <clears throat> probably true. Uh, I don't know how I would keep all this at that. Well, first, first of all, if it's frozen, frozen, it'd be very hard to cut. If it's thawing out, that's fine. Yeah, so that that might be getting a little thick. That might be getting a bit thick. And these are going to shrink quite a bit in the dehydrator in the whole process. Now, if you were a machine, if you were a, a manufacturer, you'd want them exactly the same thickness so that you could control the cooking time. The way I do it is, the thick ones are on longer than the thin ones. Um, this will be the dehydrator anywhere between 6 and 12 hours. Guess what? The thin pieces are going to be on for 6 and the thick pieces will be on for 12. And that's quite alright. <clears throat> and then you get into some of these nignogly little pieces here like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and process all four of these, and I'll come back when I have my beef jerky cut up. If I come across anything I think you should know about, I'll turn the camera Okay, it's about uh, half an hour later, and I've gotten through most of it, and um, I didn't find anything, you know, weird or unusual that I thought should be brought to your attention. Um, I'll just show you how I do an end piece like this when it gets right down to it. I mean, like, that's a great piece of beef jerky. Looking, you know, it's going to look nice for presenting to people. 
but some pieces are going to look weird. And um, yeah, so I'm doing this on on garbage night so that I know I can get rid of this uh, quite readily. We don't, you know, again cleanliness. You don't want flies. Uh, they'll find this stuff, right? If you put it out in the garage and uh, especially when the warm weather here. So I haven't uh, cut myself yet. Knock on wood. And then so when you get to the end, yeah, the pieces get pretty small. You don't want to make hamburger, so you just you just do what you can. Sometimes you gotta fillet a piece, and there's a chunk. I don't know. Maybe I'll just kind of cut it like that and flop it out. So that is my meat. Now I am very surprised. Those eye rounds, although they looked bad, there was a, a you know a fair amount of waste. Um, I'd say maybe. 20% of it waste, but it was all on the outside. This was really nice on the inside. So I got more than I expected. Um, I'm now going to divide it up. And what I find is about a handful will fill up a tray on my dehydrator. I've got five trays. So I will divide this into groups of five handfuls and then I'll, I'll figure out how much ingredients I need for one batch. Okay, so we are all um, measured out and whatnot. Um, I've kind of determined that I've got enough uh, for four batches in total. So I had two eye rounds that I started off with. So basically one eye of round will give me enough for two batches. And what do I call a batch? Basically, I've got five trays like this and I want the beef spread out across there so I took five handfuls and I figure that half an eye around will fill up the five trays pretty evenly and I get a good dehydration and there's a batch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure out the ingredients for one batch, one marinade batch. I will be putting the marinade in these bags, double bagging them and freezing them and then all this prep work is done. I just basically bring it out and dehydrate it. That's where I started off with the other video that you may see on me um, uh, going into the dehydration process, which we will follow through with today. So I'm going to, for the first time ever, measure and do what I would do, and then I'll, I'll triple the batch over here. So the, one of the first things I would put in here is lemon juice, and in a single batch, I would probably be putting in about a quarter cup of lemon juice. So a quarter cup here, would that be about how much I put in? Maybe a little less. What does that mean? That means three quarters of a cup for the other one. Because I gotta divide this into three batches. Okay, so that goes over there. Next, I will have soy sauce. Don't use the low sodium. We want the salt to help preserve this. Um, so use regular sodium, you, just your particular choice. Again with this, I'd probably be putting in, again, I'll say yeah. Do I feel that's enough? Yeah, I think so. A good quarter cup. So in my bulk batch, I need three quarters of a cup. And again, it's the salt and the fact that we're dehydrating it is going to help uh, to uh, preserve it, right? Now, here's the funny thing is, how long will this last? I don't know. I've never had a batch of beef jerky when it's made last, honestly, never more than a week. It's eaten too fast. Everybody wants it, so. Okay, so three quarters of a cup there. Goes the weasel. Worcestershire sauce. What's this here sauce? Again, uh, lots of flavor. I'm gonna go with a quarter cup of that. Which means three quarters of a cup. Or thereabouts. Over there. And do I throw this jar out? Absolutely not. That's for hot sauce. That'll be in the fall. We've got the habanero peppers growing just outside over there. Another ingredient that I put in is red wine. 
Um, nice bag of red wine. There's surprisingly a lot left in there. I will put in, oh, guess what? Maybe a quarter cup of red wine. And again, these are approximate, right? Three quarters of a cup. You think I'm going to use this all? Probably. Okay. And don't worry about, yeah, I know it seems like a lot of liquid, but believe me, it'll soak it up a little bit more there. Finish that off over there. What I'm going to have to do after this is watch the video and then write this down and make a list for you guys. Next on the liquids, we've got some sort of um, hot sauce. Nothing too crazy. This is Frank's Red Hot uh, here. Um, it's, it's tangy more than anything. There is a bit of heat with it. You don't want to overwhelm everybody. So we're going to go... You know, that might be a bit much. Let's do it this way. Let's look at this here. Let's say... One... Let's go two tablespoons of that. Ah! Quarter cup. So you know what that means over here. So, you know, up until now, I've never been able to... They're always close, but they're never really the exact same recipe. Which is kind of... Interesting. All right. But this, maybe, if it works out good, is repeatable. Here's a variable. Uh, liquid smoke. Now, um, there was a bunch on sale at a store. Normally I get hickory or mesquite. This is uh, pecan. The other one I have in the fridge is apple. So this is going to change the flavor of it quite a bit. Um, your liquid smoke gives it that smoky flavor. And of course, that smells okay. This is strong stuff. I am going to go with in a single batch like this. I will go with a a full tablespoon, which means three over here. One, two, three. And don't forget, I'm dividing this across the three bags that I have. And maybe just a little splash extra for, for good measure. Okay, three of those. And oh, I almost forgot something important that I like to put in. If I have any, and I think I do, way back here, yeah. This adds a lot to it. This really does add a lot to it. Maple syrup. Um, gives it a bit of sweetness. I find for something like this, uh, you know, you can use natural maple syrup if you want. That would be great. Um, but... I find that uh, the uh, the cheaper table syrup is just as fine. It gives it a bit of that flavor, and um, the sweetness is is yummy, and uh, gives it a nice texture to the a nice texture to the uh, beef jerky as well too. Okay, so that is it for the wet. Let me clean up my measuring spoons, and I'll come back with the dry. Okay. One of the big things that I like is garlic powder. Don't get it confused with garlic salt. Uh, you'll be in trouble. Because um, you, know, you can make it too salty. All right, You can make it too salty. But I do like it. I'm going to put in, let's see here. What would I normally put in? I'm going to put one and a half tablespoons. of garlic powder. So that's uh, four and a half into the big bin here. One, two, three, four and a half. Okay, next I'm gonna put in some seasoned salt. Again, more of a salt. Lowry's or live highs or whatever you want. And I'm gonna go with a full 
complement one full tablespoon there, which gives me one, two, three over there. A little bit of Italian seasoning. Uh, never hurts. It gives it a little bit of a je ne sais quoi, or as the French would say, I don't know. Um, I'm going to put in about a half a tablespoon of Italian seasoning just to give it a bit of. So that's going to be one and a half of these. One, two, three. So you got your oregano, your thyme, parsley, sage all that sort of stuff in there. Now we get over to this stuff. Uh, black pepper. Again, you can taste the black pepper when you uh, when you eat this. So I'm gonna go with a, a teaspoon of black pepper. That gives me three over here. One. Two. Three. And, oh, you see how I, uh, I have all these labeled, right? My, uh, if you ever looked at my using spices uh, video, you can see it up here in the uh, cloud, up in the atmosphere part of this. And um, I got the, the, I fill them up that way. It just really, really seems to be convenient for me. Um, the thing is, make sure you put the, the label on the lid and on the um, side so you don't get the lids mixed up. I don't know if I, again, you don't want, this is to taste, right? Cayenne is your heat, again, with that uh, Frank's hot sauce. I don't want it too hot, but I, I do like a little bit of heat in it. Uh, helps the beer go down a bit better. So I'm putting a half a teaspoon there. That gives me th three half teaspoons over here. One, two, three. And now we gotta be careful. Uh, something I had that I'm adding, a little bit of smoked paprika. And I'll go with a half teaspoon of that too. Yep, or more. And that just gives it a little bit of a earthy taste. And that, my friends, is about it. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. I've forgotten the maple syrup in the past, and that has been a no-no. So here's the part now that you got to do. You have to do this. You got to get in there with your hands and you got to mix this up. Okay? You got to get it there and mix this up. And there, it looks like a lot of liquid. So you're marinating this. Okay? You're marinating this. And it is a lot of liquid. You will be amazed as to how much that beef uh, will soak up that liquid. Okay? And when you're done and you put this on your uh, dehydrator uh, tomorrow, because we're going to put this in the fridge covered overnight. For at least eight hours, I would recommend longer. So it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning today. We'll be resuming this video at about nine o'clock tomorrow. So it'll have marinated for 11 hours. And um, and you wanna make sure that every part's covered. And you're gonna stir this two or three times over the next 10, eight, 10 hours. And make sure that it's all getting covered. And you can see already that there is not a lot of liquid left there. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, there is some, but it's getting absorbed already and it's coating it on the outside. So a good marin, I would, no way I would ever put this on the, on the uh, dehydrator like this. It needs time to soak in. So we'll keep track as to how much liquid is there now. And I'll do the same thing tomorrow and you'll see, yeah, there'll be some, there'll be some, but it should be significantly less. Now keep in mind the whole time I've been doing this, the beef has been cold. We don't want to let it get it warmed up. So this is going in the fridge and I will be soaking this in the fridge overnight. What did I say? No, it's going to be closer to 23 hours. 23 hours this will be marinating. I said, I think I said 11 or something, but yeah, we're going to let it sit for the whole day. Okay. So you want to make sure it's pressed down and it's sitting in the liquid and again sometimes it gets folded over and that's what you're stirring it by hand will take care of right well that's fine mm, i love that mm-hmm i reckon i like me some beef jerky all right then yeah it's be good for halloween right you know you get the you put your hand through the cloth and 
olives and spaghetti and what's this? Oh, it's Uncle Billy's liver. Okay. All right, so that's gonna sit there like that. I will put the cover on and into the fridge. Now when I get back, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. Okay, I have, um, this is that batch of stuff that I made with the uh, before. I'm gonna mix that up, get it nice and homogenous. And I've double bagged my beef jerky that's going in the freezer. I don't know how, I don't know how it can get through the blood Ziploc bag barrier. I know your brain has a blood brain barrier. Um, the things can't, a lot of things like viruses and stuff or whatever can't pass through that barrier and uh, it's some sort of membrane. And yet, I don't know how, but blood will get through the seam on this bag. It must be some sort of quantum mechanics or uh, you know, entanglement or uh, superposition. I don't know exactly what's going on, but double bag it. I know Ziploc bags aren't that cheap, but in the grand scheme of things, we're still ahead. If you ever buy beef jerky, you go buy that much beef jerky, that's three pounds right there. Um, it's gonna cost you a lot more than a Ziploc bag. So, and if you, if your time is money, if you wanna spend your time cleaning out the marinade and blood from your freezer, single bag it. But I'm telling you right here on Das Lab, double bag. Okay, so I got that all mixed up and I'm gonna try to evenly distribute it across the three bags. So this should be, like theoretically, there's about a cup. This should be exactly the same as what is in the stuff that's in the fridge. Two. Not quite. more three so the same quantities and the same ratio of everything so for the first time ever I should have three batches that are the same now I'm gonna write down the recipe and I'm gonna put it down there in the nether regions for you guys to uh, explore and if I don't like something on it I'm gonna change it um, I've got to be careful about the salt content so I want to have the lemon juice also helps break down the beef a little bit it makes it a little tender if it was a, a bit of a tough um, old goat then um, the lemon juice will help to uh, tenderize it basically and I believe there's uh, the acidity in there offers some preservative uh, benefits as well too um, so I'd be careful about that, but if it tastes way too lemony, okay, I'll cut down on the lemon juice and put uh, maybe more soy sauce or something like that in. Okay, that type of thing. Uh, if it's too hot, I'll put maybe a milder hot sauce, maybe cut out the cayenne pepper altogether, um, maybe use a different type of pepper. Uh, what else could be there? Maybe it's not maple syrupy enough. Maybe you add to have more maple syrup. Okay, so single bag, double bag, and you could theoretically let this uh, sit in your fridge for a little while and uh, marinate that way and then freeze it. But personally, I think that that's gonna happen on the thawing out part. And I will lay it flat. I'll make sure that I got a good uh, marinade on there. And I will lay that flat and uh, freeze it flat like that in the freezer. Uh, I've kept it in there for, I think the longest I've gone is maybe six months. And uh, pull it out. And there's a whole video on what you do after that with it. Pull it out. Pull it out in the fridge. Let it marinate. Let it, let it absorb because it's not going to absorb in the freezer when it's frozen it's not going to be sitting there marinating per se 
some will, some won't. Uh, you may actually want to pull it out and put it in a pot or some way that when it's thawing out, you can actually stir it and, and mix it up. Okay, again, to me, double bagging seems to be the, uh, seems to be a good way. I've never had it leak through both bags. That means that, hopefully it doesn't happen this time. And get the air out of there and lay them flat in the freezer. So that's it for this portion and uh, I think I'm actually going to uh, end the video there. I don't know if I'm gonna, there is another video on what happens and how I actually go through and dehydrate it. So I don't know if I re really need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, sometimes you do get a little bit on you, but try not to let any get, get any on you. Um, have fun. Don't be afraid to try, be safe, and don't get any on you. We'll see you next time on Das Life. Subscribe if you like what you see. Take care, enjoy.